Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Irvin from Excel's Fund. This is our episode 142, average of column B for each unique value in column A. All right, Mike, we have a great question sent in by Sean at YouTube. He has a very large table, much larger than this table. There's uh, codes in column A and then percentages in column B. And for each unique code in column A, he needs to get the average of the percentages over in B. And he tried using index and match, but it returns only the top value. Also tried nesting an if statement, but ran into a problem with seven if statements. That tells me that he is in Excel 2003 or earlier. Otherwise, we could go to 32 if statements, but if statements aren't the way to solve this. Um, I have lots of different ideas in mind, but I'm going to go to the old tried and true pivot table first. So we have one cell in the data selected, insert, pivot table, existing worksheet, click uh, next to our data, click OK, check mark code, uh, which will send it to the wrong spot. I'm going to undo that. Instead of uh, check marking code, I'm going to drag code down to row labels. And then I'm going to uh, check mark percentages, which is giving me a sum of percentage by default. Uh, but we can change that. Click right there on the first sum of percentage, field settings, change to average, click OK. Um, we're really done at this point. We, I'm going to go back to design, change the report layout to tabular form to get real headings there instead of the row labels. That is one of my pet peeves with pivot tables, but a uh, fast way to go. Now, the one uh, downside here is if this data changes, you're going to have to come back to the Options tab, click inside the pivot table. Here, let's just do it. Let's uh, change that to uh, 95%. You have to click back inside the pivot table, go to the Options tab, click on Refresh, and let it refresh. Uh, back in Excel 2003, uh, it was a little bit different. You would take the code value and drag it to column A, take the percentage value, drag it to column B, and then uh, you would look for that field settings icon. That icon right there was on the floating pivot table toolbar. Choose that and click average and you would have the same results. Although Excel 2003 data, it's on the data menu, data pivot table uh, and finish uh, would get you there as well. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, we all know pivot tables rule, and the reason they're so perfect is because what is the one line description of what a pivot table does? It does calculations with conditions or criteria. Here, you know, we can switch over to a formula, but it's going to involve a, an array formula, and you have to get all fancy with it. Here, you just got to drag and drop and change the calculation. So what are we doing? We're calculating an average based on a particular item from this column, in this case, 102. So if we come over here, if we're going to try and do this with formulas, I'm going to use uh, advanced filter unique list to extract exactly one instance of each item in column A. In 2003, the keyboard was Alt DFA. And then you get this. In 2007 or later, it's Alt AQ. Now, you know, when 2007 came out, I remember going through all the Alt keyboards, and I had this one memorized, DFA. And it makes sense, Data Filter Advanced. So it was easy to memorize. But this one is a lot cuter and a lot shorter. And A and Q are right next to each other. So it turns out that this keyboard was pretty awesome, Alt AQ. We get to advanced filter. I'm going to say copy to another location. It completely got the wrong list range. I'm going to click in A1. You got to have field names when you're using advanced filter unique records only. If you don't have a field name, there'll be exactly one duplicate because it will treat the first item as a field name. So I have cell A1, control shift down arrow. Criteria range, you could put criteria using unique records only, but we're not going to have any. Copy to. I'm going to Control Home and then click on D3 there. Control Home just jump me up to the top, say I was down 10,000 records. And this is what we want, unique records only. I'm going to click boop, and there we have a unique list. So, And that's a convenient way if you do this a lot, especially with keyboards to get a unique list. You don't have to use those crazy formulas. And I'm going to say Average. That'll be the field names. Control Enter, Control B. Enter. Here, we want to use the average. Now, if you were in 2007 or later, you just use average if. But if you were in 
earlier versions, that function didn't exist, meaning 2007 or later has this, 2003 doesn't. No problem. It's almost exactly the same as average if, except for what? Average. And then you put the if function inside. So you say if. Now remember, what's our goal? The average function is wants some numbers. So our goal is to get these numbers into the average. But with the if, we can just give it a logical test. An array of trues and falses, or an array calculation where we give it the whole column, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4 to lock it. I'm going to say, is anything in that column equal to relative cell reference? Now, that logical test is expecting a single true or false. We're giving it an array operation. There's an equal sign on an array of items. So when we highlight and hit the F9, it'll spit out lots of answers, trues and falses. Control Z. Because we're giving an array operation, this formula will require Control-Shift-Enter. That argument, logical test, it doesn't matter what other function if sits in. Because this is a special array operation, we're going to have to use Control-Shift-Enter. Now we have all those trues and falses. Hey, what's the goal? It's to put these numbers into the average function. Control-Shift-Down arrow, F4 to lock it. We can leave the false out, because what's cool about that is the if function will automatically put falses in. So if I were to highlight this and hit the F9, we have filtered those values in column B using falses. So now we only have the actual values that are associated with the 101. Now Control Z, we're just using F9 and Control Z to see how the formula is working and how it's created. I'm going to close parentheses. And if you hit Enter, it'll give you sometimes a value by implicit intersection, or in this case, nothing. you got to enter this special formula with a special keystroke that says, hey, Excel, we're making an array calculation. Hold Control, Shift, and Enter. You could see up in the formula bar those curly brackets. That's Excel saying, hey, I understood that you're making an array calculation. So now I can go double click and send it down, and boom. And the thing about this is, if I change the calculation here, it instantly updates. So when I hit Enter, you could see that instantly updates. And that's really one big advantage to formulas over pivot tables. However, that's a lot more complicated than dragging and dropping in a pivot table. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. All right, Mike, that was a cool array formula, equal average open parenthesis if open parenthesis. But you know, I always said average if when that came along in Excel 2007. I said, that's just for people who can't figure out how to sum if divided by count if. So another way to go, if you don't want to use Control Shift Enter equals sum if, we're going to look through this range over here in column A, F4, comma, see if it's equal to 101. Uh, if it is, add up the corresponding range from B. And actually, you don't have to select the whole range, just the first cell will do it. Uh, sum if divided by count if. Uh, here's our range. Same thing over at A. Control Shift down arrow, F4, comma, see if it's equal to 101. And we should get the exact same result with just a regular enter and no Control Shift enter. Much longer formula, but hey, it's just a sum divided by a count, although in this case, sum if divided by count if. A couple of great ways to go there. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.